Three, two, one. Welcome to Made for More Living. One small step for man. With Johnny Jennings. Kick the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy. The fastest and most exciting hour of news, events, and real estate in Northern California. And this is a fact that was proved. Powered by EXP Realty. Online at madeformoreliving.com. Does everybody know what time it is? Get ready. Here we go. Matt, did you know that it is easier to get a product from China to a warehouse here in Sacramento than it is to take that product the last mile? Really? Yes. What do you mean the last mile? The last mile. So let's say you ordered a hat from Amazon. Mm-hmm. They can get that product to the Amazon warehouse from all the way across the world easier than it is to get it from the warehouse to your door. Really? Why is that? It's just there's so much logistics involved with it mm. that apparently it's, it's one of the hardest things. They, they actually call it the last mile in logistics. And um, what, what's, what does that have to do with real estate? Yeah, what right? does that have to do with real estate? So the, what that has to do with real estate, <laughs> since we're talking about driving, is a little story I like to tell. It's called Hold My Beer. Okay. okay. Absolutely. So, all right. So here's who. I don't drink, so I don't relate to that, but I get the phrase. Hold my soda. Whatever. Hold, hold, oh, yeah. Hold my beverage. Hold my beverage. <laughs> hold my coffee. Hold my coffee. Yeah. Hold my tap water. <laughs> so, um, so what, so this is, this is a true story. And, um, I had a call from a seller and they're like, Hey, we're interested in having you come out and meet with us and go over options and selling our property. Um, it's a unique property. It's out in the foothills and we think you'll, you're the best person for the job. Mm-hmm. And so I'm um, okay, okay, great. And so I hop in the car, I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving. And I pull off the side of the road and they're supposed to be off the side of the road. And I'm like, there's no house here, but mm-hmm. there is a dirt road or a gravel road. So I'm like, okay, let's take the gravel road, taking the gravel road, go a little while longer. The gravel stops and it's just dirt. And I'm, and I'm driving in my, in my little sedan and it's like not, not an off-road vehicle sure. at all. And I'm going, I'm going, and all of a sudden it starts getting really steep. And all of a sudden I'm like, man, I don't even know if my little car can make it up this grade. And uh, long story short, I get, I, I, I spun out a couple of times, you know, I lost some traction, but I was able to make it to the house. And there's just like a flurry of dust everywhere. Sure. And uh, the sellers are standing outside kind of laughing at me. And of course they have these monster like Jeeps, so, like big old tires right. and lift kits and all this stuff. <laughs> and they're laughing at me like, I'm surprised you made it up the hill. And I yeah. was like, well, you're not the only one who's surprised. Right. So uh, they're like, hey, come, come on in and we'll show you, we'll show you the home. So they showed me the home. They have this beautiful home with spectacular views. But then um, they said, before we go over values and kind of what it is you provide as an agent, I really think it's important because we're, we're sold on you. We're convinced. We don't, need to see, we don't need to have a further conversation about you, but we really want you to actually tour the grounds. And they had about 40 acres. Wow. And I was like, and it was in the, in the forest on a steep hill, right? We've already established that. Like I drove, I barely made it to their house. And so I'm like, okay. And um, during this process, the husband, uh, he works nights. So this is his evening, even though it's early in the afternoon, it's his evening. And so he's had, I think two, maybe three Michelob Ultras at this point. Okay. <laughs> and, and then honey goes, uh, his wife goes- I like goes, where this is going. I know his wife goes, hey, how about you, you give him a tour of the grounds? And so I think, okay, we're gonna hop in a side by side or something like right. that. Nope. We hop into one of those monster Jeeps. Sure. And he and um, and he goes, oh, wow, I'm, I'm glad she's letting me drive. She never lets me, she never lets <laughs> oh, me do this. this is great. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. Hold on, let me call my wife and just tell her I love her. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me make it like one, my last request. And so he, he's still, he still got that death grip on the, on the Michelob Ultra. And, um, <laughs> and I climb into the passenger seat and we start touring the grounds. And this turned into one of the most epic Jeep rides I have ever ever been on. Like I grew up in the, you know, kind of out in the country and um, I've done some, what I thought were pretty intense Jeep tours. This ended up being the most intense Jeep tour nice. I've ever been on, but it was intense un- in a good way or intense in a bad way. It was unintentionally intense. <laughs> I can see why he never gets to drive. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and so we're driving, we're driving. And all of a sudden uh, there's just a sheer cliff off to one side and a stiff, a, a steep bank off to the other. And I'm like, man, we're barely like, we're almost too wide for this road. And then all of a sudden we start slipping and sliding because we're already on a steep grade. This road is on a grade. And so we're already sliding towards the edge. And I'm like, oh man, here we go. This is it. This is it. We're going to roll off. And we actually start tipping over. And then there was this little sapling that was on the side of the road. 
and we like tip over into the sapling. The sapling bows and bows and bows and bows, and all of a sudden it snaps us back upright, and then we were able to get out of there. But wow. we almost went rolling down this mountain, just the two of us and the Michelob. But I knew we were in <laughs> trouble. I knew we were in trouble because he's like shifting and talking, and he's holding on to the beer, and he's he's good. I knew we were in trouble when we were coming up on that sapling, and he goes, "Oh crap, hold." Hold my beer. Really? And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is not good. But that's the last mile. So that's why so many agents. So I ended up getting the listing agreement signed. Everything went well. It was it was a, it, it was, was a test for you to see if you could handle the pressure and you passed barely. I passed, yeah. But you know, <laughs> with um, dry pants, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. There was some there was some uh, some seat cushion missing from his car, right? But, <laughs> but I, I had dry pants. Um, but what do you mean by the last mile? Then how are you relating to that being the hardest part of the journey, the last mile? So there's just so many people that have tried, so many corporations even that have tried to come into real estate and dis disrupt it. Say, hey, they charge too much. They're, these fees are unnecessary. I was just texting with, a, emailing with a guy I used to work for in the past because I used to work for a discount brokerage. I used to think the same thing that many sellers think. And I told him, hey man, this just, the model does not work. Mm. Help you sell is hanging on by a thread. Redfin has never been profitable. Uh, Rex is gone. Purple Bricks is gone. Like no longer functioning. And these are companies, if people are not aware, are structured to where you don't need to hire a, a, a realtor, right? You just yeah. go onto a website, fill in your address, and they kind of automate the system for you. And or, or home HomeCoin. HomeCoin's another option, right? Okay. So, so Redfin, they do have agents, right? But they've never been profitable in 20 years. So if they're not profitable, what kind of resources are they providing? What type of agents are they hiring? Right, if they're not profitable. Homecoin is an option where it's an a la carte where you can go and say, hey, I want photos, I want MLS access, I want some help with the contracts, and you get to pick. But I run into individual agents, the same agents on, on transactions more often than I do on Homecoin. And the reason why is because these companies are trying to automate and try to use trying to use technology to replace the real estate agent, but technology and, and an inexperienced agent isn't able to go that last mile, isn't able to net the client, make the client more money than a traditional realtor. Maybe someday, I'm not saying it's going to be this way forever, but as it stands right now in 2024, that's just not the case. Because the basics of it is selling a home and buying a home is a complicated process. It's not easy. It's not like going and buying a hat on Amazon. There's a lot of complications. It's paperwork. It's it, it's it, And it's more than that. Not only is it a giant purchase, it's the biggest financial transaction that you will do in your life, but there's a lot of emotion tied to it because it's not just some two by fours and some nails. This is your home. This yep. is where you're going to raise your kids. Or where this you did where, raise your kids. Right. And this is where, yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of emotion tied into it. Yeah. And obviously, uh, uh, families want to get the most possible for this investment that they've made because this event investment, this transaction is going to determine the next transaction. And oftentimes the financial status of, of the future years and decades. So it's not something that you can just leave to a computer to automate or a company that's not even in your own state, that someone operating in another, uh, you know, country even it, it's, it's a transaction that, necessitates, in my opinion, in your opinion, a personal touch. Yeah, not even in my opinion, but like just in terms of if you compare statistically, right? If you look at what real estate agents net, a good real estate agent. Not, so I'm saying like the top 10%. I'm saying an excellent real estate agent. I'm not saying somebody who just got their license last week and has never done a transaction. I'm saying a fantastic real estate agent will net you more money. They will make you more money than any of those discount options. There yeah. might be some one-offs there. You might get lucky, but if you want to roll the dice with your with what is potentially your largest investment, that's your call. But if you want peace of mind, then you need somebody that has experience in going that last mile, that has experience in how to market the property, experience in pricing the property, that has relationships. I don't. I can't tell you how many deals, how many. Um, deals Valerie and I have either closed because of our relationships with agents on the other side or with lenders and vendors. Like there's just so much that goes into this and the average realtor only lasts about five years. Why is that? It's brutal. It's, it's this, this industry chews people up and spits them out. And the reason why is if you have a significant like client load, if you're doing this full time as a, as a real estate agent, that means 
you know, nine to five, you are dealing with title companies, escrow, title and escrow. You're dealing with lenders. You're dealing with inspection companies. You are dealing with photographers. You have all these moving parts that have to be handled during business hours. Well, guess what? Nights and weekends, that's when sellers are available for you to come by and tour their property. Mm -hmm. That's when buyers are available to go out and see homes. So when does a real estate agent get the day off? Like if they have, if they, if they're working with three to five people. Right. Because they want to be available for their clients. They want to work hard for them. They want, they want to provide that level of service that those clients expect. So when does that agent get the time off? So when you far, first started getting into this industry, did you face those challenges and how did you persevere and get through it? Yeah, actually, we'll probably end up, I was just talking with my mama this, this morning and I think we'll probably get her on the show because she might provide an interesting. Moms are great for interesting talking dynamic. on the radio. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You get to see the real Johnny, but, um, as far as, I didn't, I didn't know. I had no idea when I got in the industry. I think most agents don't. That's why 93% of them quit within five years. Mm -hmm. If you knew, you probably would pick a different industry. And so what I have done and what Valerie and I have done it, over the years is created a, a team to help carry that load. So it's not just us dealing with all of the different facets of a of a real estate transaction, we have other people to help carry that load. So that enables us to still provide a superior level, superior level of service without total, total, absolute like burnout. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you're listening and you're thinking about selling your home or you're thinking about, oh my goodness, the, the, the summer, the spring, it's, it's right around the corner and we've what we want to look for a new home, then absolutely Johnny Jennings is your guy. And how can they reach out to you if they want to, uh, Ha have a conversation with you about selling their home, touring their property. Maybe it's not a Jeep and yeah. extravagant Indiana Jones adventure, but you I'm know. down. If you are, I'm down. <laughs> but if you want to reach out to us, just go ahead and go to madeformoreliving.com, madeformoreliving.com, or just Google us. You'll see that we are the most Google reviewed team in the Sacramento region. Nobody has more reviews or higher reviews. So we get questions all the time. Like, how good are you guys? Like you sell a lot of homes, but are you doing a good job? Just read our reviews. Yeah. And if you're a realtor or you've thought about being a realtor and maybe you're struggling right now, you guys have room on your team for m more realtors, right? And Correct. you guys provide all the resources that yeah. guarantees them success more so than when they're at where they're at right now. Absolutely. We, we, we provide like so much for our agents. We can, we can go in about that in deeper, like a conversation in just a little bit. But if you, here's the thing though, too, if you're a real estate agent, and you are wanting to grow your business and you want to do this full time, we're the team for you. If you're wanting to do this part time, if you're just want to like tell, tell your friends at Saturday soccer camp or whatever that, hey, I'm a real estate agent, just so you can say you're a real estate agent. Or if you want to make a couple bucks so you can pay for a vacation every now and then, like we're not the team for you. We're looking for people who are committed to this craft and want to do it full time. And make good money. And make All good right. money. Yeah. More to come. Made for more living with Johnny Jennings. And hey, if you're listening today and you're thinking about putting your home on the market, you want to take advantage of all of these buyers that are out shopping right now. You want to sell your home before summer gets here. Reach out to Johnny Jennings and the Tom Daves Real Estate Team. It's 855-TOM-DAVES or try this. Go to the website TomDaves.com. Type in your address. Right away you find out what kind of offers you would get from Johnny Jennings or how much you would get if you wanted a cash offer from Johnny no matter what kind of condition your home is. Is in again Johnny Jennings with the Tom Dave's real estate team. The website is Tom D A V E S dot com. There's a reason why they're number one in Sacramento. This is made for more living with Johnny Jennings, powered by EXP Realty. Online at made for more living.com. Is your neighbor's house sitting on the market? Is it at a for sale sign in the front yard forever? Or maybe you're thinking about selling, you're worried the same thing is going to happen to your home. Or maybe your home is sitting on the market and you're like, why is my home not selling? Matt, I was literally talking with somebody yesterday who was saying, hey, I'm, I've been burned by real estate agents. I don't want to work with real estate agents. I don't think you guys do a good job. The last real estate agent listed my home for six months. We only had 15 people through the house. Mm. So why would I, why would I want to work with you? You know, this is probably one of the most common questions I get about. Why is it one of the most common questions? Because it happens a lot? Because a lot of people go through it. Yeah. Mm. Even in today's market, even in even in 2021, when when, you know, you could list anything and it, would, it felt like you could list anything and it would sell. There were still homes that did not achieve a successful sale. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of homeowners probably are considering a, a, a number of different things. Is it just the economy? Are homes selling at all? Maybe it's not just my home. Maybe all of Sac- nobody's selling their home in mm. Sacramento. Or they think maybe it's priced incorrectly. It's priced poorly and nobody's coming to see the house because it's just priced wrong. Or maybe they think the real, the realtor is not doing enough job in marketing and promoting the home. Or maybe there's some kind of feature in the home that they is, is unattractive or it's just pushing people away. I will say, I will say most of the time when I have these conversations, at least they're not saying the real estate agent did everything they could have done. Right. That's not their perspective. Right. And they also believe that their home is probably priced correctly. So oftentimes the blame the blame lies on the realtor. So there could be a lot of issues though, but you yeah. think one of the majority of issues that you see is that the realtor is not doing a good enough job as they could be doing? Uh, yeah, without a doubt. So, the, so there's two, I definitely think price, at the end of the day, you can have a home priced correctly and with decent marketing, not even top tier marketing, but at least like really good marketing, um, the home will sell, okay? But what, unfortunately, what most real estate agents do is, we, is the three Ps. Have you heard this no, joke before? No, So the three Ps include, they put a sign in the yard, they put it in the MLS, and then they pray that the home sells. <laughs> okay. Those are, that's, that's their marketing plan, the three Ps, okay? And, and so, you say that just doesn't work. So that, that can work, but it doesn't necessarily net the client the most amount of money, mm. right? Which is ultimately what most, I mean, unless a seller is like, hey, I am going through a divorce, we just need to sell this as quickly as possible. Or, hey, I need to be across the country for a new job, and I need this money to make that, that new job work, let's sell it as quickly as possible. Or, I'm about to lose my home to the bank, I want to. I want to. I just want to get some money out of this so I can move on with my next, the next phase of my life as quickly as possible. If speed's a factor, then typically the client is not looking to net the most. But most of the time, the majority of the time, people are looking to make the most off of that sale as they possibly can. And so, unfortunately, a lot of agents use the three Ps. Right. That's it. They may not even do the third P. They may not even pray. Right. right? They may only do the first two, where they put a sign in the yard and put it in the MLS. But What top producing teams do, what our team does, is we go above and beyond those three Ps. So if you're interviewing agents, what I would ask them, the first thing I would do, even before you call somebody, is Google them. Google, do they even have a Google website? Like I was was talking with another fellow yesterday up in Grass Valley, and he's like, yeah, I I, I interviewed this person, I interviewed this person, and I'm interviewing you. I said, great. And then um, later I looked up who I was up against. I was curious, okay, I hadn't heard these names before. And I, one of them didn't even have a Google presence. So to me, that just says they're not keeping up with the times. Google is absolutely critical if you're a real estate agent because all roads lead to Google. They may start at Zillow, but then somebody's going to go to Google and Google you, right? All roads eventually lead through Google. And so if your agent doesn't even have a Google profile, that's a red flag. So not only do we have a Google profile, but we have the most Google reviews out of any brokerage or team in the area. We have more more reviews and a, and a higher review rating than anybody. So I would encourage you to at least review your agent and see what kind of reviews they have. So that's that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is ask them what's their marketing plan. Okay. So we have a Bay Area buyer marketing plan where we actually through geo targeting and uh, geo fencing and retargeting, we're actually able to identify people looking to make a move to the Sacramento market. And that that buyer population moving from the Bay represents somewhere between 15 to 17% of the buyer pool on average, almost one in five, right? And so if you're not marketing to those people, then you're, you're potentially leaving money on the table because they're selling a home that's a fraction the size of our homes out here for right. many multiples. Right. And then um, another thing that your agent should be doing is they should be doing what's called proactive marketing. So are they doing postcard drops through the neighborhood? Are they proactively calling through the neighborhood and letting, letting your neighbors know that your home is on the market? Because they may live two streets over and they may have a friend or family member that's looking to move to the community, mm. but they're not going to drive down your street. They're not looking at what, home, what homes are on the market on Zillow, right? But if they receive a postcard or a phone call saying, hey, the, your neighbor two streets over just listed their home. Do you happen to know anybody considering um, making a move to the, to the neighborhood? You're potentially leaving money on the table. And, so, and then also just make sure that they have a, a, a buyer um, a buyer pool. So we have over 15,000, 15,000 people in our buyer pool. These were hand raisers who said, hey, we're interested in making a move. 
And for some reason or another, they haven't made that move yet. The timing may not have been right. The financing may not have been right. Whatever it is. So what we will do is we will proactively reach out to that buyer pool that we have exclusive to us and market, and market our clients home. On top of that, we do a whole bunch of other stuff, but those are just some of the things that we're doing that go be above and beyond the three Ps. So if your home isn't selling, ask your real estate agent, what exactly are they doing to market, to market your property? And if they don't have good answers for that, is it okay for someone who has uh, put their home on the market and they've listed with one agent, are they able to break that relationship and you know, reach out to you guys that made for more living? Can they reach out to Johnny Jennings and say, hey, I'm not happy with my current realtor. He just doesn't seem like he's doing a good enough job. My home's been on the market since September yeah. and we've only had 10 people come by to look at the house and I'm not getting any emails or calls. You know, I just leave a message oh, with my realtor, yeah. you know, and I think that's a big important that's issue, right? Flag. You got to have connection. It's not like you said, do the three Ps and I never hear from my agent until we get an offer. Yeah. Like it seems like from my perspective, there should be constant communication Absolutely. What's going on, you know? And so, you know, is it taboo to like break relationship with your current agent? Is there like certain paperwork that has to be done if they want to, you know, they've been hearing about Johnny Jennings and made for more living team. And it's like, okay, you guys sound great. Am I allowed to do that? Yeah. So real quick, I want to touch on the lack of communication thing. That is a huge red flag. If you're in a buyer transaction and you're, you know, you're purchasing a home or you're a seller and you're selling a home, and you are not hearing from your realtor, like proactively, if they are not anticipating your requests, then, and if they're, if they're not anticipating your request, that's, that's a yellow flag. If they're not getting back to you at all, that is a huge red flag. Because what's happening behind the scenes is they're trying to find the answers. They're trying to solve a problem, and they want to come to you with a solution tailor-made and with a bow on it, but they haven't come to that solution yet. So if your agent is avoiding you, massive, massive, massive red flag. So to your question about if you're not happy with your current realtor, what, what should you do? The first thing I would recommend is every real estate agent has a different policy about this. It's not, there's not an industry standard, but reach out to them and let them know what your concerns are and, and have a conversation. Because maybe they are doing a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe they, everything is great mm. and they just, that's just how they operate. And so have a conversation with them, make sure that everything's okay. And then if the pro and then express your, your desire to have more reliable communication, what, get more people through the home in a specific timeline, like, like show me what you're doing for me. So at least have a conversation with the agent. And then if that doesn't work, then you're going to have to review whatever the paperwork is that you signed with them. Some people like, uh, will, will let you out free and clear. Like, Hey, I, I, I like, for example, the made for more team. We do not lock people into contracts. If at any point you say, hey, this isn't working out, I'm not happy, I don't want to sell my home, I don't think you're doing a good enough job for me, you said X, you said you would do Y, and you haven't done it, then, then by all means, like if we're not earning your business, we will rip up the contract and part as friends. Yeah. Some, a lot, some agents provide that. Most agents, however, will sign a cancellation, They'll let you out of the agreement with them, but then there's like a, a 60, 90, 120 day clause in there where they check a box and that says, hey, if the home sells within that period of time, then you're going to owe them a commission. Mm, wow. So just make sure that, that whatever you, it would, so have the conversation. And then if you think you've canceled, make sure before you sign it, that you're, you don't owe that agent anything after that point. And then after that, after you've signed the cancellation, everything's good, then you should reach out to another agent. To, like Johnny to Jennings and Made for More Living, right? Yeah, yeah. You can certainly reach out to us, but we're not allowed to talk with you if you are in a contract, a listing, if you've signed a listing agreement and are still in contract with somebody else. We, right. Not only are we not allowed to do we won't talk to you. Okay, because we because that's this is our livelihood and we don't want to lose our sure, license. Sure, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you want to be respectful because you work with a lot of these agents. Exactly. They could be representing buyers, and so I I hear that a lot. You know that there's, you know, realtors have this camaraderie with each other because you all relate to the struggle and the challenge and the successes and and you're out there for each other you want to support and help everyone and that's why you guys put the call out for other realtors that are out there if they're struggling yeah. and you want to be on a team that's going to be supportive and helpful and give you all the tools that you need and has a data list of of current ready to buy clients and you know you guys are a great team and you're there for any agents that are listening that want to be part of a great team and real quickly before we go to the break so if someone's listening right now and they have their home on the market, 
or they're thinking about putting their home on the market, what's a realistic expectation right now of how long the home should be on the market? Like if they listed in September and here it is, you know, the spring, um, you know, is that too long? What, what's some realistic <laughs> expectations that people should have for how long their home should be on the market right now? Yeah, we get that question quite frequently. And, it, and the, the honest answer is it really depends. It really depends. So I was on a listing appointment yesterday in Grass Valley. This home was almost 4,000 square feet, um, about two and a half acres, way, like I say Grass Valley, it was way out in the middle of nowhere. That home is going to sit on the, on the market longer than a home in Roseville cookie cutter, three to $450,000. So it really depends. And your agent that you're interviewing should be able to bring you that market data. And they should be able to explain to you, hey, here's the average for the zip code. Here's the average for, for, um, for properties like mine. So that way the expectations are set. So, because when you're selling a home, it is, it is incredibly stressful. And every time I leave, I, I leave a house, I just leave, leave sellers with a, with a word of encouragement. And that word of encouragement, you can just almost see like just melt away, melt mm-hmm. away stress. And the reason why is because like, let's say the homes are selling white hot, like 10 days, you get, an, you get an offer on your property on average for a home like yours, okay? That's still nine nights that you went to bed after the home went on the market wondering, why is my home not sold? Why do people not like my house? How much longer am I gonna do, mm. do this? What, what, what is my home gonna sell for? Is it gonna sell for more or is it gonna sell for less? That's nine nights and that's in a, in a very competitive neighborhood, okay? And so, um, as far as if your home's been on the market since September, I've done listing appointments, we've sold houses in Recently in Elk Grove, Rancho Cordova, Sacramento, Roseville, Rockland, Folsom, El Dorado Hills, um, Placerville, Pollock Pines, Grass Valley, like, uh, Emigrant Gap. Like we've all kinds of different markets and I am not seeing them on average take longer than if, it, if it's priced correctly and if the marketing's done correctly, longer than 60 days. Mm. So if, you, if you're beyond that 60 day mark, then something, something needs to be looked at. Mm. And before we go to break, what you said you you try to give them some encouragement. What's that encouragement that you usually give them before leaving the appointment so that they feel good, you know, going to bed day after day without getting an offer? So this is this is something this is super this is super uh you may not think it's super ninja, but I have done it like uh <laughs> Hey, if it works, it works. I've you know? said it dozens and dozens of times and I actually picked it up from my business partner, Tom Daves. He's the one that taught me this this line. And it, when I'm leaving, I just say, hey, this home will sell. This home will sell. Mm. And then you just see like the stress melt away. Because honestly, that's their number one concern. Yeah. And some people are like, yeah, it will sell, but for, her, but for how much? And I'm like, I don't know, but we net our clients more than the average realtor. So you're going to get more with us than with somebody else. So, but if, if, you're, if you're just a good real estate agent, we'll sell your home. Mm. You know? Yeah. They'll go with that. They'll, they'll cover that last mile. I think a lot of people want to hear that, you know, just oh, trust us, you know, don't fear it will sell, you know, I have a listing you, coming you up. know that I have a listing coming up in Kelsey and the, uh, the seller called me a couple days after the appointment and said, Hey, I've thought it over, you know, you're really great, but you know why I'm going with you is because just, you were so confident that you could sell this home. Like you said, this home will sell and I believe you meant it. Mm, and, um, and we are in the business. Yeah. All right. More to come. Stick around. And hey, if you're brand new to real estate, or maybe you've been doing it for decades, but you're struggling every single month, maybe you're thinking about jumping into this amazing career, but you want to make sure that you're part of a team that's going to take you to the next level, reach out to Johnny Jennings and have a discussion with him. Find out about all the resources that he provides along with EXP Realty. Reach out to madethenumber4living.com madethenumber4living.com and find out how to be a part of Johnny Jennings and EXP Realty. This is Made for More Living with Johnny Jennings powered by EXP Realty online at madeformoreliving.com. Bidding wars are back in Sacramento. In fact, just this last weekend, we had over four. We had put a, a house on the market and we had over four offers come in over list price. We had another agent represent a buyer and he was up against seven additional buyers on the same home. So bidding wars are back. And is that due to just the 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 market improving or what why would what would you attribute that bidding war to yeah so i think a couple different things it seems like people are adjusting to the new normal interest rates above seven percent 
are here and there doesn't seem like they're going to go, in, go away anytime soon. And people are tired of waiting. Sellers are tired of waiting from, hey, I'm waiting for interest rates to go down. Um, buyers are tired of waiting for the prices to come down. And like, the prices just continue to go up. And so they're just like, hey, this is the new normal. I'd rather take that next step and begin the process rather than wait. And there's just a lot of pent up demand from people who were waiting that are like now jumping back into the market. Mm. Yeah. So when you mention bidding war, do you mention that in a way that it's a good thing or a bad thing, or it's somewhere in the middle? It just depends on who you are. What? How do you define a bidding war as terms of good or bad? So if you're a seller, it's an it's a fantastic thing. It's it's wonderful. Because, and explain why that is. Yeah, because if you're a seller, you want you want to bidding more. Oftentimes, um, I guess there might be somebody listening listening to this show and thinking, okay, if there's a bidding war, then then I might, I'm worried about leaving money on the table. I should price my home higher, right? Because the market is so hot right now. Let me, let me price my home a little bit higher than maybe what the online portals like Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com are showing, or maybe what my agent is suggesting. And the problem with pricing your home higher is you may only get one buyer. And then when that buyer comes through, then they are going to do their due diligence on the home. They're going to inspect the home. Even if it's sold as is, they have the right to inspect what they're buying. And they may come, they always have a request for repairs. I always tell sellers budget for this request for repairs. Well, then they come to this, come, um, they renegotiate with you on the request for repairs. You can accept, counter, or reject the request for repairs. But if you reject it flat out, the deal falls apart and you go back on the market. Now, in today's hot market, sellers or other buyers are going to wonder, hey, why did that home right. not sell? What's wrong with the home? So it has a stigma. So you feel pressured to at least negotiate with the buyers on that. And that's if you only have one offer on the table. Compare that to you have two, three, four offers on the table. Well, you can accept the highest and best, or you can accept the, the offer with the best terms for you as a seller. And then you can also have the second best person sign a complete what's called a backup offer, have them complete it in writing. So that way, if the first offer falls through or if they get too aggressive on the negotiations for the repairs, you can say, hey, we already have a signed backup offer. Like if, if it, take it or leave it. And that gives you a whole lot more uh, negotiating power as a seller in, in, a, in, a, in a bidding war type of a situation. Mm, okay, so for these homes that you're listing and you're generating bidding wars, what strategies are you utilizing at Made For More Living? Uh, what strategies are you utilizing to attract those bidding wars? Or is it, like you said, it's just part of the housing market right now. People have established that the rates are going to be what they are and they need to get into a home. Um, talk a little bit about that of what draws a bidding war. Yeah. So what draws a bidding war? Number one thing is pricing the home correctly. Like not overpricing it, not necessarily underpricing it, but pricing it correctly. So what we always say is the listing price is the marketing price. It's not, it's not the sales price, just because it's, let's say the home is comps out at $400,000 and you started at $399, that doesn't mean the home's selling at $399. It might sell for $380, it might sell for $420, right? Depending, depending on a, a number of different factors. So, so is that your goal when you go into a listing appointment and you talk to a potential client, you strategize, hey, our goal here is to list this home at a competitive price, maybe even lower than the market, lower than comps, so that you generate that bidding war. Do you have that on a regular basis? Hey, let's try to generate a bidding war. Yeah, we do have that conversation. Okay. And it, But at the end of the day, it's up to the seller because as I always tell them, it's your house, it's your rules. I'm here to advise you. Hopefully you trust me enough, like if we're gonna work together, that you trust me enough to take my advice. But at the end of the day, it's your house, your rules. For example, in the Bay Area, I recently read a blog by Ryan Lundquist. Whether you're an agent or a buyer or seller, you need to sign up for Ryan Lundquist's blog. It's the Sacramento Appraisal Blog. Best one on the market, and it's the guy's local, and he gives like honest truth. He doesn't care if you're a buyer, a seller, or an agent. He's just telling you, hey, this is what's happening in the market. And recently, he did a blog about homes that are selling in the Bay Area, and homes that the I think it was like 51, maybe 53 percent of homes that are selling in the Bay Area are selling for over list price. And the reason why is because in the Bay, they strategically price homes 5, 10, 15 percent below market value. And to put that in context, 5% below market value on a $500,000 house is $25,000. That's, that's a lot of money, you know? And so, um, for whatever reason, sellers over here don't trust that, right? But it, 100%, it, it works. 
99.9% of the time. Because historically, Sacramento hasn't always been a hot market like it is now. Mm. Whereas the Bay Area, historically, it's always been you know, very competitive, right? Well, it's like listening to the radio. Like you'll hear like around holidays, um, the auto dealers, they'll have, they'll have a, um, a special deal on a car, right? It's, it's called a lead magnet. It's pulling them in for that one car. Um, and, but your home should be a lead magnet, right? It needs, it needs to stand out from the crowd. And sometimes people, for example, Valerie has a ho has a home that she's, um, so a buyer she's working with in Los Lagos, premium community, right? The buyer was adamantly opposed to Los Lagos. She did not want to move into there. She did not want to. She did not want the home prices. She but then all of a sudden, she thought it was outside of her budget. It was fifty percent higher than what she was wanting to pay for a home. But then she, she uh, the JJ actually sent her the listing on this one, and uh, she's like, "Oh my gosh, I love it. I need it. I want to have it." Right, and so she went in and made an offer on that home. So what that has to do for sellers is oftentimes, if you are pushing the upper envelope of what the home is priced at, people aren't even seeing your home mm. because they've set their search filters. The realtor has set the search parameters based off what the client right. has told them, but they'd be willing to pay a little bit more if they knew it existed, mm-hmm. if it checked all the boxes. And so that's why it's so critical to, to price a home correctly. And then um, as far as marketing goes, we talked, we joked a little bit about the three Ps, you know, uh, put a sign in the yard, put in the MLS and then pray that the home sells, like your real estate agent should be doing more than the three Ps. There should be some digital marketing that they're paying for. There should be some print marketing that they're paying for. There should be uh, a team of people that is proactively calling through the neighborhood that the, that the team or agent is providing that service for you as a seller. They should be doing more than just the three Ps because anybody can do the three Ps. A discount service can do the three Ps. Right. right. It does, it's not going to net you the most amount of money. Yeah. So for folks that are listening right now and they want to work with Johnny Jennings and the Made for More Living team, they've been hearing what you've been talking about, but they're in the market to purchase a house and they're hearing this conversation about bidding wars. Yeah. And for them, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to compete with these all cash buyers from the Bay Area. But hope is not lost, right? It's not impossible. What are some strategies that you, Johnny Jennings and the Tom Dave's real estate team and made for more living? What strategies do you guys incorporate to help buyers in a competitive market where there's all these bidding wars? Great question. So most people falsely believe that the highest price wins. And that is without a doubt, not true. Sometimes for sure. Sometimes the highest price does win, but what really makes the difference is the real estate agent because a good real estate agent will do. So we have a, an actual document that, that we provide our agents with and it's titled 10, 10 winning, winning a bidding more tips and tricks. And there's 10 of them. And so one of them is you need to have a local lender, right? If you have a local lender who has gone through a pre-approval process, not pre-qualification. And so, uh, for example, there, somebody submitted a home, an offer on one of our homes and they came in $40,000 over list price, and they were with Rocket Mortgage, Mm -hmm. okay? Two red flags there. One, they came in way high, so the home may or may not appraise for that amount, and if it doesn't appraise for that amount, then the seller's gonna have to drop the price. So it looks great on paper, but in what's gonna actually correlate to the the seller's bank account isn't gonna happen, okay? The second thing is, they had a pre-qualification with Rocket Mortgage. One, Rocket Mortgage is traditionally horrible to work with. They're on the East Coast. Their, their, pre, their, their pre-approvals are not very tr- valid. Hmm. They've got a lot of advertisement commercials that say otherwise. I are know. you telling me they're not telling the truth in their commercials? I'm saying maybe they're, <laughs> they're, uh, they're sugarcoating um, their, their actual product. So, And there's a difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval. A good real estate agent is going to know the difference. Pre-qualification means, Matt, you and I were having a conversation. You told me what your income was. You told me what you thought your credit score was. And based off what you told me, I I said you're pre-approved for X amount or you're pre-qualified for X amount. Okay. Pre-approval means the lender has done a credit check. They've looked at your bank statements. They've verified your income. Like they under, they, they, they've gone the extra mile. Okay. And then there's an underwriting, underwriting process, which goes even even further than the generic pre-approval. So a good agent is gonna get you pre-approved and fully underwritten with a local lender. So that way when, and it doesn't cost you anything. Mm-hmm. That's, this is a free process for you. And so when, when, a, when an experienced listing agent sees that pre-approval come across with the offer, they're like, okay, I know that lender, they do a great job, they're already fully under, underwritten, there should be no issues with the loan. 
because you can offer, you can, you can make any offer you want, but the best offer is the one that closes. Mm, yeah. So that's, that's something that, 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 buyers should be doing and their agents should be helping them with. If you want some of this free information, if you're looking to buy a home or sell a home or you want to meet with Johnny Jennings, um, or if you're a realtor and you're thinking about, hey, I want to be on a better team. I want to be on the Made for More Living team. Just go to made the number four living.com, right? Made for More Living. Made the number four living.com. If you're an agent, if you want to buy a home, if you want to sell a home, uh, reach out to Johnny Jennings. He will uh, reach out and talk to you, give you all this free information and help you um, get to the next level of your life if you're buying, selling, or you're an agent. Again, made the number four living.com. All right, guys, there's a reason why they are number one in all of Sacramento, why they have more five-star Google reviews. Johnny Jennings with the Tom Daves real estate team. If you're thinking about putting your home on the market, go to TomDaves.com, type in your address, find out right away what kind of offers you would get or how much you would get if you wanted a cash offer from Johnny Jennings today, no matter what kind of condition your home is in. Again, it's TomDaves.com or reach out to Johnny Jennings. He'd love to talk with you about your home. It's 855-TOM-DAVES. Again, only the best. Johnny Jennings with Made for More Living. This is Made for More Living with Johnny Jennings, powered by EXP Realty. Online at madeformoreliving.com. Why do agents charge so much money? I hear that question all the time. Like they're just they did nothing. They did nothing for this money. And <laughs> and now and now they're wanting to take a piece of my hard-earned equity. Why? Why, Johnny, do you guys charge so much? Have you ever been asked that? Have you ever wondered that question? Matt? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of my friends and family wonder. You know, I had a friend who just sold her house, mm. and she was happy that it sold for so much. You know, so there's that side of it. it's like, oh, I'm so excited that it sold for mo- so much. And then of course my realtor, they got six percent, so for they're doing, ma- they're making a bundle off of my home for you doing know? nothing. For doing nothing, yeah. right? Come on, oh, what did they gosh. do? They just signed some paperwork. I could have done that. I wish. But it was on that the easy. other hand, she's still excited that her home sold for so much yep. more than what she was expecting. Yep. So. There you go. So I would argue, hopefully that agent did their job there, right? Right. But um, yeah. So so how do real estate commissions work? This is a this is something that I want to peel back the curtain a little bit on and just shine a spotlight and get some clarity around it. So generically speaking, that six percent. Let's just say it's six percent. There's not a set standard commission that is. If anybody's telling you that, mm-hmm. they're breaking the law. Like there is no standard commission. But commonly, what you see is six percent. Even in today's market, even in the local Sacramento region, still commonly seen six percent. Break that down. It means six percent in total. Total, total so commissions. That's split up, right? Correct. So it's typically typically it's split fifty percent to the agent representing you, the seller, and typically fifty percent to the agent that brings the buyer. So that six percent now turns into three. So for your friend who helped who worked with that listing agent, that listing agent was not paid six. She might have been paid, in this example, she might have been paid three, okay? So now we're dealing with a 3%. So out of that 3%, how is it typically broken up? Well, on average, broad, broad brush strokes here, but on average, one third percent, so 1% goes to the broker, one third percent or that, that second percent goes to taxes, and that last third of, of a percent goes towards living and marketing. Right, so that's paying the realtors gas, it's paying the realtors uh, mortgage, it's paying for their food, it's paying, it's putting shoes on their kids, right. it's, it's paying for their life and marketing. And so when somebody discount, and so when somebody is saying, hey, will you, you know, adjust your commission a little bit? You have to realize that you're bumping up against one of those three things. The brokerage is going to get their piece, right? That's just baked into it. Taxes are going to get paid regardless, and if they don't, then they're then that agent's going to end up on a payment plan, and that's right. a whole lot of that's a whole other conversation. So, what do you think they're going to they're going to skimp on? Because they, they got to pay their mortgage, they got to put right. food on the table. They're probably going to skimp on marketing. And so, when when you are negotiating down from that, if your agent doesn't have a robust marketing plan, if they're just doing the three P's, then yeah, negotiate them down. But if they're providing print marketing, if they're doing digital marketing, if they have a Bay Area buyer program, if they're running radio ads that are generating traffic to their websites where your home will be featured, if they have a a team of eight to 10 people who are proactively calling through the neighborhood, like if they're doing all these other things beyond putting it in the MLS and putting a sign in the yard, then what you're doing as you negotiate against yourself, you're negotiating against yourself. Okay. So that's essentially how the three, the three the three buckets work in real estate. You got the brokerage, you got the taxes, and you got living and marketing expenses. 
That, does that make sense? Sure, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So, and keep in mind that real estate agents are self-employed. So, with the exception of I think Redfin, they're salaried, like like they're like a base with bonuses. But most other real estate agents are self-employed, so they do not receive a commission. They do not receive a dime until they achieve a successful sale, until they help you get the price you want. Yeah, so every time they're going out and you know showing a house or driving around, signs, all of that gas, they're paying for that all out of pocket, right? Correct, yeah. Okay. And what you don't see behind the scenes... And then there's fees incorporated as well, yeah, right? Yeah, there's so many fees. I don't so, think people, a lot of people know about those. Most people... It surprises me how many people will, will pay for the schooling, go through the background check, Take the test and then be like, wait, what? I got to pay more. Right. It's like, yeah, you got to pay more. And these are on annual, a regular basis. These are annual dues. Like these are not going away. Um, and then they're like, well, what do you what do you mean? I need a I need a website. What do you mean? I need a CRM. What do you mean? I need um, an uh, a marketing system. Like you're self employed. There's nobody providing this for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your brokerage might provide some some generic stuff out of the box, right? But but it's up to you to either figure out how to use it or to pay for systems that are going to actually work. And so that's, that's a benefit to most agents being on the team. So for example, here at Made For More, we consider ourselves a launching platform for agents. We realize the life cycle for an agent, typically they start out on a team, so that way they can learn how to, uh, how to correctly represent buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. and they build up that book of business, and then they launch into their solo career, right? So now they're a solo agent, and then from there, they either start their own team or they just remain a solo agent with like assistance and stuff helping them with the with the process. Um, so we realize that three step process from team solo team. We understand that, and so we're, our goal is not to keep an agent down, but to actually actually help them launch. And so how we help them launch is we provide them. I used to say a business in a box, but that just doesn't do it justice. We we, we provide them with a fighter jet. And so the reason why I say a fighter jet is most agents. If you told them business in a box, they think, okay, I can, I can self-learn all this stuff and it'll, it'll be fine. But if I handed you all the tools that we provide, agents do not know how to use them. It's, it, it's like handing them a fighter jet and they're like, how do I turn this on? Right. How, do I get, how do I get to the, to the taxi down the runway, let alone fly the thing? And so what we do is we provide agents with a CRM and a website. A CRM. Yeah, so CRM's uh, Consumer Relationship Management. So it's, it's, it's a top tier CRM that enables them to keep notes on all their different files and just organize all these different people they're working with. So that way they can provide a higher level of service to their clients okay. rather than keeping it on sticky notes and a notepad. Right. <laughs> and so um, then we also provide them with a marketing system. So that way they stay top of mind and then that way they can adequately represent their clients when they're promoting their, their clients' properties. Sure. And then here's the ad spend. So most agents... They're taught do open houses, and they're taught, um, you know, work work the, your network, work the people who you know already. Okay, that's fine. But what happens when everybody in your network has sold, has bought a house with you? Like, there's only so many people in your network. You need to go out and find new people to help. And so you're going to need to augment that with marketing at some point. And what we're seeing is that, on average, you can find somebody. Somebody will raise their hand and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing something right. for about 15 bucks," but that has about a 1% conversion rate. Really? Yeah. So that means you would need to ha spend $15 a hundred times or put another way, $1,500 to get a, somebody that's going to move forward and, and actually sell a home or buy a home with you. So your marketing budget would need to be at least $1,500 a month, right? And then um, every agent, we always recommend have a coach. Have a coach. Um, the, the cheapest coaches that I've ever had were the worst, and the best ones I ever had, I paid the most for. So a good barometer is a coach should cost you about eleven, or excuse me, a thousand dollars a month. A good coach, they'll make you that in spades, and, and it'll, they'll just launch your career. And the last thing is a marketing designer. So who's going to design the flyers? Who's going to design the social media posts? Who's going to help you with the website? Who's going to do um, the all all that realtory stuff that you see on social and on Google ads and Facebook sure. ads? And so a good marketing designer, if you hire them a virtual one overseas, are about $5 an hour minimum. And for 40 hours a week, that equates to about $800 a month. So those are the basic things that you need. You need a CRM, you need a website, you need a marketing system, you need, a, you need an ad budget, you need a coach, and you need a marketing designer. Those are the basic things that we provide our agents at the Made For More team up front and no out-of-pocket expense. 
if they were to go and buy on their own the tools, like if you're curious about what tools we use, I'm happy to have a conversation about it, but it would cost you about $4,320 every single month. Whether you're closing a house or whether you're not closing a house, those that payment is going out. Sure. And on the team, we shoulder that burden for you until you're able to take it on for yourself and launch your career as a solo agent. Awesome. So, so if they're listening and maybe they have been incorporating some of those tools, but yeah. it's just not working because mm. maybe they're not you know, they're not utilizing them the right way, or maybe they're mediocre and they're not the top of the line that you guys use. Mm. Um, what's the best way for an agent to come and at least just talk with you? You guys got a brand new uh, state of the art office oh, it's suite, gorgeous. right? That's yes. just opening over seven, up over seven thousand square feet, two Roseville. conference rooms yeah. in Roseville, signing room, and they get access to that. Oh, right? absolutely no. There's no there's no desk fee. There's no there's no monthly cost to them. So that that I mean that's just amazing. So uh, there's so many benefits. Uh, obviously, you guys are the most Googled, you know, one of the most successful uh, teams in all of Northern California. And yeah. people think, well, you know, there's no way I'm going to be able to get on that team. There's just no room. Obviously, you guys are just too successful, and you, you only want top of the line agents. But if there's agents struggling right now, or they just want to go to the next level, right? Yep. They want to be successful. They want to, you know, reach that plateau where they're just, or they're at that plateau and they just want to go further, they can reach out to you guys. Absolutely. So I will say this, I am not a coach. I'm not, that is not my, my goal. I am not, I help people buy and sell houses and I help my team. That, that is my core focus. And so if you, if you are looking for coaching, like I'm, I'm just not your guy. That's not what I do. But if you're looking for a team, if you're looking for a culture, or even if you just have some questions, I'm happy, I'm happy to help anybody. Cause again, my, one of my mentors, Brent Gove said a rising tide lifts all ships. And so I'm happy to help. Um, and so if you want to reach out to me, you can just go to madeformoreliving.com. You can Google us and just say, hey, I'm, I'm interested in connecting with Johnny. Yeah. And a member of my team will will set that up. Made the number four living.com. Made, Made the number four living.com. You what else? It. Anything else before we let him go? Nope. Last and so, words. And so if you are a buyer or seller and you are just kind of curious and want to know more about how realtors make money or if you're curious about like what 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 are we doing to market our clients' properties? Like we spend over on average about half a million dollars a year in marketing. If you're wanting to know more about that, reach out to us. If you are wanting to buy a home and you're not wanting to overpay for a home, reach out to us. We specialize in that. And then if you're looking to get in the industry or if you are in the industry and um, you're looking to take it to the next level, reach out to us. So buyers, sellers, agents, we're here to help. Made the number four living.com. Thanks, buddy. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt.